our guest tonight is TNA star Tyrus. How you doing? Uh, room temperature, man. I'm maintaining. <laughs> Fantastic. Since joining Impact Wrestling in 2004, you have been working with Ethan Carter III as his personal bodyguard. How have you liked working for TNA thus far, and what are your long-term goals with the company? Um, well, I'm more of a more of an advocate, enforcer, and assistant, uh, advisor. You know, uh, if you've noticed uh, in his big moments in his career, the one who's been in his ear uh, has been myself. So a little more than a bodyguard. A bodyguard is kind of a mindless guy who just stands around but he's actually uh we have a lot of uh conversations about the you know the goals that we've had uh in tna so uh i prefer enforcer just like you know double a was in the past with rick flair rick flair didn't get where he was at was unless he had a guy like that and that's kind of where i model myself out that's what I do. I got yelled at by Paul Heyman for calling him a manager when he called himself an advocate. So that's what I do. I misrepresent people. My apologies. So, Mike Chiari. I'll be good. <laughs> uh, well, you've perfected uh, the the advocate role, if you will, uh, in both TNA and WWE. Um, but what do you think needs to happen for you in order to uh, eventually branch off on your own in TNA and, and have a really strong run as a top single star? H- how do you go about reaching that level? Um. The one thing I've learned uh, in trying to uh, be successful in this business is timing. Um, and you just kind of wait. Sometimes uh, it'll fly on the wall, but really you have your own personal agenda. You just have to play the game the way that they play it. You know, um, it's always been, uh, you know, my plan. I never, whether it was a tag team partner for tag team gold or a singles championship, I mean, that's obviously a mindset. That's what I train for. Um, I work my ass off to put myself in that position. And sometimes, you know, politics be what they is. Sometimes you got to sneak in underneath their noses and, you know, then all of a sudden they can't do anything about it. So that's kind of just been my, my main thing. You know, when I, EC3 came to me and said, I need help, uh, I said I would get it back. I would, uh, you know, help him get that to the championship and I've done that. So now uh now I'm looking at things a little bit differently because I've accomplished my goal uh, as far as uh help and no friend out. Brandon Gavin? Your speed and agility in the ring is typically overshadowed because of your power and the nature of your character. Do you ever feel that you have to limit yourself in the ring to compensate for the character? Um sometimes I think uh a little bit but um the one good thing about being in TNA is that um, I'm able to do a whole lot more uh, because they obviously give you more time to do what you need to do. And um, people are seeing things for me that haven't seen in a long time. Um, so that's the one good thing about it. And, and um, you know, you don't want to show when you can beat, uh, when you can beat a guy with a T-bone and a headbutt, then you maybe don't need to hit him with a fall, you know, fall of humanity or, um, you know, something off the ropes or whatever. So I kind of just, Pull things out of my bag as I see it, as I see it uh, needed, and it's good to have things, uh, you know, not being considered a one-dimensional wrestler, um, to have things uh, in my bag when I when it's time for me to pull them out. Well, what, you mentioned Ethan Carter the Third. One of the top wrestlers in the business today is EC3, and your presence is a big reason his character has been successful. Uh, what do you think makes your partnership work, and where does EC3 rank amongst the people you've worked with in your career? Um, well, for one, we're complete opposites. Um, I talk loud, but you know, he talks loud and doesn't really say anything. Like, he's always talking. Uh, he's um, he's pampered, obviously. Uh, I come from a little bit of a uh, rougher upbringing. Uh, not a lot of family support, uh, whereas he's been <clears throat> coddled from day one. If mom and dad aren't in the audience, there's an aunt or uncle there or cousin i mean the guy's family list goes on and on it doesn't hurt you know that you know dixie's family too that kind of helps a little bit um i'm sure that job interview went a lot smoother than mine did um but uh at the same time though we both uh do push each other we both train hard we both train um at hard knock south we um we work hard we've both uh experienced ups and downs and and having to deal with people we just handle things in different ways you know um as far as people I've worked with, I think he's probably one of the most creative guys. Um, a lot goes into being EC3 and, and Tyrus, and you would be surprised some of how the what, how the conversations would go. Um, and we understand where we're at, and it's very uh, he, he's he's gone on record a lot of times. I took a lot of bullets for him, 
in terms of um, you know the DC three character and you know Tyrus character and stuff like that. But um, overall, I would say um, you know we can't we're we're at the top of DNA. You know, um, even with the with the invasion, it didn't even phase us. It had nothing to do with us. You know, um, you know PJ Black got a title shot and you know he he handled it. Uh, well, uh, it, it, I don't want to say easy defense because TJ Black's one of the best in the, in the world, but uh, he definitely showed. I think that was the match was probably the most defining moment um, against a guy um, coming from another place. He really didn't expect to wrestle, and uh, he went out there and uh, he beat him clean. So, um, and technically, he should probably have both titles around his waist right now, but you know, I don't make those decisions. So. Um, but uh, he's up, you know, uh, if I had to say, probably, you know, uh, you know, I've been in there with uh, some really good guys, some guys with some experience, but as far as creativity goes, I think uh, EC3 is probably the most creative. Mike Yuri? Well, you mentioned the invasion, and, and there's been a lot of invasion angles in professional wrestling over the years, some successful, some not so much. Um, why do you think the current one involving TNA and Global Force Wrestling uh, ultimately will or won't work uh, in terms of creating an entertaining product for the fans? Well, I think it's no secret that both uh, companies are fighting for recognition. Um, you know, you know, there's the big machine, and then everyone kind of fighting for that 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 two spot. And I think Global's mistake was is they thought the TNA was very vulnerable um, and could be taken over rather easily. I just don't think they counted on the resolve of the locker room, you know, and like I said, um, as long as, you know, global stays away from, you know, the heavyweight championship, we won't have no problems. You know, I got no problem with Jeff. I got no problem with his uh, wife. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's his issue. I, you know, but, um, and as far as the other wrestlers go, I mean, the only thing that made me laugh a little bit is, uh, more desky said he was the biggest guy. And I mean, it kind of made me giggle a little bit, you know, like, I guess they don't really look around much on their heads down when I'm standing around them. So, um, you know, it's luckily for them that our 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 TNA roster is so deep that you don't even need to see the the cream of the crop. You know, anybody from um, the clown on up uh, is a serious competitor. So, you know, I don't, I don't think Global Force really counted on uh, our locker room being so low. Brandon Gavin, what has been the most enjoyable or unique parts of working with TNA after being with the company for nearly one year? Um, wrestling again. Uh, I'm wrestling, you know, and um, and I, I really enjoy smacking around with Spud. It's probably one of my favorite hobbies. Like to lift some weights. Um, like Spud just takes a good beating. He's one of those guys that like doesn't quite know when to play dead. Um, he's always like, I'm still standing, you know, and like this makes me laugh. You know, he heals up and he just takes a real good beating. I really enjoy uh, putting hands on him. He flies so easily, you know. Like, uh, I wish I had a string. He's like a kite. You know, I just fly him around. But uh, uh, honestly, getting a chance to uh, to wrestle and work on, you know, I could have came out and talked and ran my mouth, but uh, I decided to do things with facial expressions and ring work, and I think it's, uh, uh, it's definitely is working. Well, as a former WWE superstar and now a top name in TNA, what was the experience like for you moving from one company to the other, and what went into your decision to sign with Impact Wrestling? Um, you know, the biggest... The biggest thing for me, because I had opportunity to sign with other uh, other companies, but uh, quite honestly, it was the um, just overall uh, professionalism. And, um, you know, I had worked with Big before, and him and I had always had a good understanding. So that was a big thing for me, is being able to be in a situation where I could speak my mind freely, especially when it came to my character and stuff, get the actual right feedback, and not have too many chefs in the kitchen and allow me to be me um, really was a big decision. You know, they didn't, uh, a teenager didn't flood me with a bunch of false promises and uh, wild stories and things like that. And a bunch of maybes and what apps that basically said, we'd like to have it here and then do your thing. And uh, that was enough for me. So, um, and I enjoy the family atmosphere. I enjoy uh, seeing, you know, everyone back. It's very close to, uh, I fit in right away. The locker room is, is is outstanding. It's just, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, you can hear things on the outside, but it's generally a very positive place to work and everyone's 
teams to be pulling for each other to do well. Even if you don't, even if you disagree, even if you're rivals. Um, perfect example is like I can't stand Matt Hardy to save to save my life. But uh, when I did the Fox News thing, um, one of the biggest supporters was Matt Hardy, and I was surprised by that, seeing how you know just night before I had uh, you know bounced him all over the ring. But as uh, wrestlers, we might hate each other in the ring. We still want everyone to do well, and uh, that's the difference. I think at TNA, maybe in other companies, you wouldn't see so many guys so positive for each other, even when they disagree and stand in the way of, you know, championships and dreams and, and things like that. So that's really a good thing. Mike Kiyori? The Funkasaurus gimmick in WWE, it was obviously a big departure uh, from anything you had done previously, and it was really unexpected from the fans' perspective. Uh, but it always came across on TV like he really took the ball and ran with it. Uh, so looking back... What are your impressions of that time period in your career? Do you believe it ultimately uh, helped you or hurt you in the long run? Well, um, first of all, when you're a little kid and you, you say one day, you know, I'm going to be a football player and I'm going to be a wrestler and, um, you know, all this stuff. And, you, you know, your mom looks at you and tells you, yeah, right, whatever. Um, if you remember, that's what your dream was. It didn't matter what they asked me to do or what they threw at me. I still got a chance to go out in the ring and do what I and, and entertain and, and do what I do. The Funko Source character was great because it taught me uh, about being humble, about being a character, about not uh, being concerned with what you think people think you should be. And if you're good at what you do, regardless of what is thrown in front of you, you'll make it work. Um, it was a challenge for me. It you know, and um, luckily for me, um, the American Dream, Dusty Rose was such a big influence in helping me. Um, make that work and to the point where I think almost um, it was doing a lot better than it was expected and then you know sometimes when things get bigger than they think people take it the wrong way um, but uh, I enjoyed that time and I think uh, the fact that it's still talked about um, goes to show that um, it was a good it was a good character and I enjoyed it but Tyrus uh, is what I enjoy doing you know, uh, and there's, I think at some point there might be a marriage of the two, but I don't really feel, um, you know, the dancing aspect. I don't necessarily, you know, I don't miss that very much, but I do love the character. Oh, we're not going to get any more dancing with EC3 when he successfully defends his title? No, nah, not going to happen. <laughs> good. good. Frankly, that's a good thing. We really appreciate that, actually. Brandon Gavin, you got a final question? Yeah. <laughs> Is there a match or moment that has left the biggest impact on you as a wrestler or even just a fan of wrestling? Um, I think for, uh, for me, um, probably, um, and this might seem weird, but like um, I didn't get, when I was in WWE, I didn't get up many opportunities to be in the cage or, or any of the, the chambers and stuff like that. I always knew there was never a lot of those opportunities. And when at a uh, legal lockdown, when, TNA threw me in a handicap match in the steel cage. I really think that was uh, against two men. I really think that was a, a coming out party for me in terms of like just finding my uh, finding my uh, ground as far as like TNA believes and Tyrus and wants to give me opportunities to show what I can do. And uh, you know the match that I had with Bobby Lashley, um, I think uh, really changed some opinions. You know as far as like being able to go out there and work and. Uh, it's one thing to be big, but it's another thing to be able to be able to work. But those two matches stand out. Um, and, uh, you know, being in the ring with Kurt Angle, standing across the ring with with what you know he is, and being a, a it was weird because I'm a fan of his, but he stood in our way. And being in the ring with Kurt Angle was uh, was a real thrill. You know, just a, just an honor. Um, you know, to be in the legit Hall of Fame, it doesn't matter what company you're talking about. Um, Kurt Angle is a four- one of the forefathers of where the state of wrestling is today. So to be in the ring with him was uh, truly honorable, you know. And, um, well, you know, I don't, EC3 would not be enjoying these comments, but I'm showing at home, you know, sitting in my chair playing my Xbox. So um, I'll do whatever I want. But uh, it was a real honor to be in the ring with him. Fantastic. A huge thanks to Tyrus for coming on the show. Tell the fans where they can support you. Well, you can always hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. Instagram is ty at Tyrus Smash. Um, and then um, uh, Twitter is at Brody Clay. Um, Tyrus is verified. But uh, hit me up on both those. And I got my fan page. And then uh, you can always uh, check me out on SwoleShop.com. I'm always on there. That's around. I got some cool shirts and stuff. I'm always messing with. And uh, 
have a lot of fun. And then uh, Fox News, of course, the Great Gutfield Show. Um, I do the big news segment for them. So uh, I'm all over the place. You can't miss me. Another huge thanks to Tyrus. Thank you. Good luck moving forward, man. I appreciate you guys, man. Anytime.